Hello, Brian. Yeah, just just a minute. Hey, listen, sorry, I don't have a lot of time. It's Brian. This, that, and the other. Look, look, okay, I, I want to tell you everything. I want to tell you the truth about wood. You want to know about the real stuff? You want to know why the earth is hollow and why we're being run by aliens? You want to you know about the stuff they're putting in your Gatorade and why you should be eating your dogs? And why, and why we need renewable resources are lie and we're living inside of a hologram? And, and I'll tell you all this, but you have to listen to this, that, and the other. You have to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Don't tell Sam that. Don't tell right. What are you doing? Are you making an ad without me? No. Listen, I, I gotta go. No. Subscribe to this, that, and the other. You bastard. 9-11 was a lie. What happened to Bill What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ferro Cabron, coming to you back again, live up in this bitch here on this December 25th. First and foremost, the shout out to the homie Isaac in the whip. Alrighty, man. Hey, uh, thank you for having me. Feliz Navidad to everyone listening out there. Hope you're having a great time. Even though it's going to be 2020 in your vision for the next 12 months, dog. That's what's up. So before we get popped off and started and reignited, shout out to the Golden Eye Food Production on the Binge on This Network. Home to Samovar Trades, Olden Time TVs, Reading Ronin, Universal Dreams, Happy News with Perry Kirk. So what's heard with me, the compa dog FC for her on the microphone. And the flagship, this, that, and the other with the homies Brian and Sam. Thank you for liking, subscribing, right, leaving us a review, rating us on the Apple Podcast, and listening to us wherever you get your podcast information at, homies. So let's get into the shits, dog. Ah, man, I'm not going to lie, let's look at this a little bit. So what's up, dog? How's your day been today? Oh, man, it's been a, it's been a great Christmas. Um, I feel like each year um, Christmases get better. It's not about... Um, it's not about the, you know, the material things, you know, as you grow up, unfortunately, you get, you know, caught up in the rat race or, you know, goals you're trying to strive for. So you cherish these moments that you have the time off from whatever you're doing and just have the camaraderie come together and have food and whatnot and just, you know, shoot the shit freely. That's community love, dog. That's coming together, taking a, what's the word I'm looking for, a pause from the struggle and just appreciating your neighbor, appreciating your community, appreciating those around you. You feel me? We lose sight of that. <laughs> I feel like corporations trying to take advantage of that too. Ah. Oh yeah. Um. You know, it's like all oh, right. Um. They. You know, corporations would have. Um. Would have a certain quota, which would mean requiring you working more hours. Um. Cutting into your quote unquote weekend or whatnot, and then working those hours we're paying you time and a half double time or whatever you want to call it but at the end of the day you're um if you're pretty much single or have no family even if you have a family you, uh uncle sam is taxing that i mean robbery is free compa we, <laughs> you know i live by the motto i said but uh, let's take a break from all of that honestly and plug into what makes this season for you with your family, like, what do you recall about your culture now that we're here? You feel me? Like, 2020 is coming up. You, you, I mean, you know, we were at the crib yesterday. You spent time with family today. Like, how does it feel to just be able to embrace your culture in those traditions? Oh, uh, well, the, uh, you know, for, for us, uh, being, being Mexicanos and, um, you know, we, we celebrate on the 24th. Of you course, know. dog. Noche buena. <laughs> Noche buena. Good night. You know, Noche Buena, where you have um, you have your, you know, the best me Mexican dishes out there. Pozole, menudo, tamales, uh, birria, Champurrado. champurrado <laughs> you know, ponche. Oh, shit. I yeah. love with a um, You know, and then just having shots of tequila or whatever and, uh, and modelo Escal time. Pulque. <laughs> you know, just, um, you know, having all those, um, all those dishes and then, you know, everybody just bringing something and just bringing unity. That's what um that's what Noche Buena is about. Hell yeah, dog. I fuck with that heavy, you feel me? And mind you, you you from the city out here, you know, you from the 818 repping the heavy and I appreciate that. <laughs> I am Mr. 818. My last name says it. All right then, man. Mr. International is going to meet Mr. Local. I'm with that. The only way to grow, <laughs> branch out from within. Hey, outward. that part, dog. Speak truth. So check it out, dog. 
how does it feel to watch your community get reawoken to more Latino soundscapes and all of that good jazz? It's exciting. It's um it uh it brings it brings hope and um with hope you can um a city could flourish, uh, a city could bloom and then the younger generation uh beneath us could have hope be like all right, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, what we're used to um I don't know about um I don't know about you but uh but I I understand you were saying like you're um the ones that grew up like ahead of you, most of them were locked up and yeah, I, like I'm from that last head generation just because a lot of my older homies either did the whole you know gang banging twenty five to life or got so got caught up with gangs and shit and violence and that whole nine. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you you feel those effects? So you know those effects. You know, just getting you know, and myself being a part of that too, like. You kind of had to, um, in a way, kind of <laughs> raise yourself on your own through the streets. Um, yeah, you had to go outside the culture to get, you know, a, a little forty on. Sometimes I feel you. <laughs> you know, and um, it, you just had to have it in, um, you know, and in a way, it just measured um, how much hard you had, you know, for yeah. uh, survival without having anyone. Anyone to really look up to. I mean, yeah, you can have your celebrities, you know, whatever in the For media, sure. but they're not here locally within, you know, they're not here in the community. So let me ask you a question. Being from El Valle, from the 818, did you ever feel that you had representation as a culture? Does that make sense? Uh, no. Um, no, I got... Uh, I mean, it, it was there, but it was very it was scarce. All right, so let me ask you this. Do you remember what you felt when you heard Noriega's Oye Mi Canto with Nina Sky? That oh, man. Sky. Dude, <laughs> hey, you, you, that's what um, is, um, I'm glad you brought that up. When when they, when they uh, Noriega brought that up, it's, um, to me, that's what, put, that's what put reggaeton on the map. Yeah. Oye Mi Canto was a song that I, I remember. I remember... Um, I remember getting actually shamed for it for actually liking that song, but I did hey, not. Hey, dog, if you got shamed for it, I cannot help your generation. Sometimes I swear, you. <laughs> I'm uh, not saying mine was better, dog, but no, mm, I'm not no. mad at the homies. <laughs> like, man, yeah, I remember it, and you know what? In that time, I was like, and it's like, all right, should I comply or should I just go different? And I was like, I, I chose different. I'm like, all right, I, I'm gonna like it. I like it. It is what it is, and yeah. go on. That's what's up. So, but what did, like, did you feel a connection to that kind of rhythm when oh, you first heard it? Oh, yeah. Um, I did. Uh, it was, you know, growing up, you know, you had your, you know, your cumbias, your. So, I'm going I'm to I'm keep it aside with you. When I first met you, I told you off the bat that I was a hip hop head. And, uh, you know, I had a hard time adapting to the Daddy Yankees, the Ivy Queens, the Tego Calderones. And I remember for a good clean minute, you, when we would go kick it and you scoop a homie up, that's what you would be having and playing in the background. Your Romero Santo, your Aventura, the whole nine, right? And mind you, I took this shit in just, you know, being the homie. So I give you props for being on that wave even in 2011, 2013, you feel me? Where, like, the revolution of the reigniting of the hip hop movement, what it was and to what it became to be, you feel me? So I wonder how much influence was that in that pivotal time scene, you feel me? Because I think you were what, in maybe high school? Yeah, that was um, when 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 that song for uh, Noriega, obviously Daddy Yankee coming out, that was, um, that was me being in the ninth grade. Damn, you were entering fucking high school? Yeah. Dude, I was DIPing. <laughs> they heard my canto out the door. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you, you did not miss anything from formal education, so. Oh, um, no, shit, dog. Robbery's free, and then education's the first thing they're going to jack you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, did, I did my fair share of robbery there, too, so. I believe it, homie, but let's not incriminate ourselves for 30 seconds. Ah! <laughs> we just, from the city. <laughs> just kidding. Not. <laughs> ah, shit. So hold on, quick pause. Give me a minute. 
do you or are you able to recall what that kind of song did for your community? Meaning your your gente, your raza, your raíz, your culture, your homies that spoke Spanish. It um as 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 far as that um it from let's say that was let's say 2004 to 2007 um reggaeton became pretty popular mind you i remember uh one of my friends listening to it back in uh 2003 so within that time i already had a i already had an idea of it and i would listen to it sparingly and then once noriega came i'm like oh it, it's arrived that's what's up dog and like i said I'm from the gutter, dog. There's a few ways they're going to go over me that I never really could catch on to or, or ride along. You feel me? Like, I fuck with Oye Mikanto. I fuck with the beat. I fuck with In the Sky. I fuck with what the fuck they were doing. To me, it was, like, dope to see. Again, to quote Biggie, it was, it's dope to see people upon it. You feel me? Like, it, that, that shit's just, like, I love to see that shit. <laughs> You feel me? Like, if you're Latino, if you're brown, if you're a minority, if you're mixed with indigenous roots and, and you find a way, my bad, to flip a dollar and make it two, get it. <laughs> Just know that you have to find a way to give that money back to the community. Why? Because you're only as good as your string, your, your weakest link. And you got to start to find a way to believe in your community. Even though we grew up with the lies that, you know, gang banging and all that bullshit, especially if you're from the West Coast. The best coast. Ha. <laughs> but to like, for me, I'm not going to front. It kind of blows my mind that I'm exiting high school to Oye Mikanto and you're entering it to it. Yeah, correct. And, and that to me is actually pretty pivotal because it goes to speak to the generation that raised Bad Bunny, J Balvin, yeah, Luis Fonsi. Do you get what I'm saying? Like these, yeah. like these individuals, because mind you, they're they're roughly within a five year age group between you and my uh, and sibling. You feel me? And then myself. That's a decade. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like five years apart, three years apart, two years apart. Like, so you're able to see an older generation leave with it. Because mind you, you're entering high school. You're a generation entering it. And my sister's in a generation living through it. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a matter of perspective. You feel me? Like you got to pull back and look at it at all angles. Like. Oye, mi canto had to have some kind of deeper influence. And mind you, here you are, what, 15 years later? Trap reggaeton is the biggest thing out there right now with a billion streams and a billion views. You feel me? What a time. <laughs> oh, oh, to be alive, dog. <laughs> but the question is, are you, and mind you, this is a cultural thing, are you predator or are you prey? And it's really easy to answer that question in your head. But you got to really sit down and think about it before, you know, we yap out of the mouth. Oh, I'm going to go with the, I would go with a mixture of both. Uh, I, I can't be. Um, no, entirely. If you're civilized, yeah. you understand that you, I can't know, you be, gotta adapt. Yeah, I can't <laughs> be. Um, it can't be. It's, you know, one or the other. And um, and it's just me, just me being honest and the vulnerable. I could, I could be like, oh no, I'm predator, but um, no, and no, I'm, dog, gonna... I, I'm telling you, someone who believes in the whole mythology that I'm a predator, I may not be the apex one, dog, but I'm the one that's gonna adapt to it. <laughs> you feel me? That's why I'm a, like, that's why I look at things at different situations because I have to under, I have to know when to strike when the iron's hot. If you know anything about metalworking or uh, forging metal. The only way you really get things to be stronger is by reinforcing it. So that means taking that one point in structure and keep bending it and repeating it and bending it and repeating it and beating it down repeatedly, constantly, until it's forged into something that can't be broken. And that's how you get reinforced steel, reinforced iron, if you mean reinforced platinum. It's because it's put to that tedious process of just chingale, 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 you know? 
So when it comes to being out here, you know, going out, dating scenes, going out, public scenes, going out, social scenes, you know, taking a shit and going to social media, like that, that's a different way of being in a whole other different Serengeti. How many bots can you avoid? How many this can you that? You feel me? How many people live just by the simple words that you can get robbed by a simple dating app? <laughs> you got motherfuckers feeling some type of way about the Cardi B incident. You feel me? But mind you, we're getting into some other shit. <laughs> this is the hood part of what's hood. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, uh... But going back to the the emphasis of the sound, dog. <laughs> I'm going to bring this bitch right back. <laughs> Okay. How, I mean, genuinely, how was that to have in the background of your high school life, if that makes sense? To have a Latino voice, to have people to start speaking Spanish. You feel uh, me? It was, it was, um, it was a, it was like a breath, a breath of fresh air. Mind you, you were like, if you want to listen to. You know Spanish music out here in LA. Um, for the majority, you'll have your your K Love, K Buena, La Nueva, and stuff like that. There's a lot of the yeah, they're they're they're, they're, neighbor, they're LA classics. Though. They're, they're LA classics, you, you know. You can but hear it, them anywhere, yeah. But to have it on <clears throat> Oye Mi Canto on, um, let's say, let's put it on Paramount Six. Ah, and, and yeah. Then, and, and um, and then uh, one hundred one hundred point three, the beat as well. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time. Once upon a time. If, <laughs> if um, ain't no color lines. That's it. They don't see no color lines. You know. So <laughs> that's um. You know that was um that was pretty powerful. And then that's what uh gave birth to um, ninety six point three, which was Latino at that time. And it's yeah, changed its name. Yeah, that was a wild time for me too. I'm not gonna lie. The Hood Academy is all that shit like a joke. Because it, it was funny kind of watching Mexicans bandwagon. And I'm like, man, y'all a bunch of hoes. <laughs> but mind you, I'm coming from Norteña, Rancheras, Corridos, Bandas, soul singers, individuals that, you know, con las botas y mariachi, tú eres madre. I'm dead ass coming from La Antigua, dog. I'm like an old man in this bitch. <laughs> but damn, dog, you are correct on how much that song kind of influenced uh, a reawakening to me at this point in Latino culture within the city of Los Angeles. Think about it. let's go with um think about um Drake being featured in uh Bad Bunny songs or um or even um no, or even <laughs> but um but um you know w- whether you can or not no, 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 it's, yeah, yeah. it's um and also um well Romeo Santos having you know Usher and um, even Drake on one of his cuts as well. So yeah, that's no, um, they, they've been working at it for a you know we, we we hear and it's and just vivo y directo. and it's just um, you know really really expanding massively uh, because the strength of numbers is there. Yeah. Yeah. No, entirely. I just and again it just it. It boggles my mind again because, you know, I grew up in the struggle, dog. Sometimes something, yeah, that van sobre tu cabeza, ¿me entiendes? You, you tend to forget that <laughs> while you're trying to busy, like, mind you, this is my personal journey at this point, you feel me? While I was trying to find more authenticity to ourselves, people were trying to sell out a very generic version of us, at least. And, you know, shouts out to those pioneers early in the struggle. Because that's what it was. If you mean you didn't know Yeager talk about Oye Mi Canto to this day, he's gonna tell you that my bad that he banked his career on it. That <laughs> if he flopped, he was gonna get dropped by the entire music industry. Just because Oye Mi Canto Boricua Morena Dominicana Colombiana Oh, oh, that was gonna drop that fool. <laughs> you feel me? So, like, you know, listening to you, just you, like mind you, mind boggling. Just looking at numbers when you when you pull back and look at decades and seeing what they are and what they're for. You feel me? Your generation is the prelude to to the beginning of relampagos, a little flash of lightning, a little flash in the pan. You feel me? Lightning in the bottle. That part, you you have one in 97 con la Macarena. 
You have one back in 2003, 2004, Oye Mi Canto. 2008, 2009, Daddy Yankee wants gasolina. What about, um, what about um, also uh, Lou Vega with Mambo Number 5? That kind of, um, that, kind that, of had, that had some buzz in it. It has some buzz in it, but Lou Vega, like I heard that album. I, I heard that album. And mm, that cabaret style music, that, that kind of 1950s Amish style swing type band type music, like... Uh, it's a conversation to be had because Latinos, you know, have that sound. You feel me? Opera, Mexi- like Mexican movies. Go watch a Pedro Infante film, dog. Like, you're going to get that, that kind of style of orchestra song and dance. Oh, yeah. But I, uh, it's it was a hit, but it's just, it, that's so neither, you feel me? But I don't think it, it's uh, such as uh, as defying, uh, defying, <laughs> defiance, as Oye Mi Canto, when you're literally calling out Latina women through slang that's known to Latinos. What the fuck's a Boricua? <laughs> to, uh, and sorry to say this, but a white individual. You get what I'm saying? Correct. Like, so when it comes to that to me, like right now, like I said, it, it's a trip to me just for 30 seconds ahorita, just because... You you have this this Latino movement speaking to the culture, and at this point is now raising a new one. You feel me? Because just how you were entering high school with this shit, somebody was entering middle school with it. Yeah. <laughs> so or you know somebody was entering elementary. You you name it. No, yeah, but but defining moments in in our culture in our, our in in you know, any society, I want to say, is those pivotal middle school to high school years. You feel me? Middle school for us was well for my bitch ass generation, Britney Spears and sing Backstreet Boys. Entering high school, you had Lincoln Park, fucking uh, other shit like that, Ludacris, Fifty Cent, that bullshit. Man, did this? That was me. That that was for me. That was. Uh that was middle school. Yes, yeah, so yeah. That, that that's my that's my high school. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like and mind you these these are like our generations aren't that far apart and mind you how we l- linked up is because you were li- like you know you lived in your city. I lived in your city. <laughs> you feel me? And and here we are just you know 5 6 years later breaking down discussion just on how your culture has affected you. <laughs> if I, if my bitch ass would have told you, hey, dog, rock with me for five years, you're going to be posted up smoking a blunt with a compa, <laughs> talking about how or what it means to be proud to be Latino and how it kind of def- defined the new generation. Would you have believed me? <laughs> oh, I would have been like, I wouldn't have an, I would not have an answer. You would have said like, what the fuck are you smoking? <laughs> I I'll just would have been like, goes huh? to the left. <laughs> yeah, no, no response on my end. Um, going back to that time, yeah. Uh, obviously yeah. today it's like, no, no, it's um. Well, you you got to know a companion. I don't think I changed one bit. If you have given me the stack with you, I'm still robbing banks till I get cancer. <laughs> yeah, that's um, yeah, that's uh, been your motto. And I was like, all right, then. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, shit, dog. Well, we're 25 minutes in, you feel me? I'm pretty sure the homie is waiting for us. You know what I'm saying? Anything you want to ask the homie? You want to break down something with me, dog? We can probably give another 10, another 20. <laughs> you got something to ask, something you want to break down, something you want to discuss? Let's see. Um, What, um, I, I, you probably broke it down last time, but um, for 2020, let's say in music. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Are we gonna be as far as you know? You got your mainstream rock is um predominantly mm-hmm. Caucasian. Yeah. Right. And hip hop, obviously, pre- um, being predominantly African American. Yeah, of course. And um, is twenty twenty gonna be the decade where we finally get a full piece of that pie? Uh, Are you talking about in the terms of the? Now I'm going to get on mad faded levels with you. 
Are we talking about in the terms of culturally speaking, will we have a cultural impact to how the culture views us? Are you talking about on a mainstream level where Fox News is reporting on us on, a, on, on us on a more mainstream type of in uh, light? Are you talking about? I would cover. Let's cover first on the bigger picture as far as uh, as far as the mainstream. I want to see your take on that. I feel that 2020 is gonna give a lot of rise to a lot of Latino voices through the mainstream. What's gonna stick? I really don't know. Do you get what I'm saying? Like 25 years ago, almost 30 years ago, we had Selena, and her rise to. American mainstream was her Latino ranchera music. You feel me? Her new techno cumbias. Mind you, she was shifting the sound of cumbias in the 90s, mixing it with disco, and she was truly creating her own genre with that. So where do I see 2020 for Latinos in the mainstream is more dominant voices. You feel me? There's there's a lot of groups out there right now uh, with people like Diane Guerrero, Jackie Cruz, uh, Olguita something. Oh, man, I, I fuck up all the names. But there's a lot of women out there in the film industry creating and advocating for more Latina voices for themselves. If you uh, I know you don't watch that many movies, but there's a movie on Netflix that uh, some some um, indigenous homegirl was nominated for a, uh, a Golden Globe or something like that. I forget what the fuck it is, dog. But Yalitza uh, Ortiz or something like that. I'm probably yeah, no, that. yeah, I know, I, I know. That's uh, was that the one that won for best actress supporting? Yeah, probably. supporting role. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. She's been on the road two ever since. Yeah, but she's the Oaxaca. She's from a uh, uh, indigenous tribe. You yes. know me? Yeah, I know who that is. And and she and they told a story based on on real life experiences that she grew up around with you feel me that's going to open doors that these individuals create for the next generation 2020 you're going to you're going to be knocking on the door you're going to bring you're going to come and ask where's my place at the table my bad but you have to bring a plate You get what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Like, we've been here. We're out here. You're guests in our places, dog. It's called Los Angeles. <laughs> it's called Texas. It's called Nuevo Mexico. So 2020 is going to have us having a lot of different individuals knocking at the door. And they're going to pick and choose who they want to show to the world. The question is, how do you define that how do you how are you able to come bring that back to your community you get what i'm saying that's why i see for 2020 for like the music space though and <laughs> now mind you that's general but but bringing it down to music and where i see latino music in the in the mainstream doc i want to see more cumbias incorporated into that bitch i want to see people making cumbia beats breaking down cumbia rhymes you feel me whether english spanish me vale if you're able to find a way to incorporate cumbias, if you're able to find a way to incorporate los buquis, broncos, los temerarios, indio, brindis, you name it, Maf the Grupo Mafia, like, if you're able to find those samples, flip and incorporate them back into the sound. Mm. <laughs> How did hip-hop hit its golden era? By sampling. Sampling uh, jazz, right? Jazz, rock and roll, uh Motown, oldies, blues, you got to dig through the crates. And the, and, and, uh, let me, and, um, and the other different diversity sounds, you know, are there. So, so it's an exciting time for that. Oh, I'm, I'm hyped, dog. Like, you know, listening to what's her dog, like I said, entering 2020 with 15 episodes into the year you feel me giving out nothing but love for the for the future in the community right and reaching out to the community is my goal for 2020 especially you know with, with just trying to expand and trying to make sure to build a well where latinos mesoamericans mexicans or wherever you're from 
for you to get a little bit of a drink of your culture, if that makes sense. You feel me? I'm really hyped for for the music scene alone. Because once you're able to incorporate cumbias, ooh, da, cumbia. like understand that como la flor is a cumbia. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the... the ch- 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 oh, yeah, the, dog. That's the... Um, that's the cumbia sound, I mean... And once you're able to embrace cumbia, then you'll be able to embrace salsa, bachata, merengue. You feel me? Because cumbia is the root to those two in the tree that is music. And um, dancing them, they all start in... Um, they're all a, uh, they're all eight steps. So what you got? Yeah, you go to mathematical with a combo. No, I'm saying, I'm saying. No, I'll give you a zapatilla real quick. Anyway, no, I'm going with the, I'm going with the. It's all eight steps. Um, if you're really technical, you got one, two, three, five, six, seven, and yeah, then uh, four, four and eight are, <laughs> four and eight are silent. But um, they all, they, I mean, speak. I'm speaking from from dancing all three. Yeah, so yeah. So they, that's why they all communicate within each other. Yeah, dog. I let the rhythm tell me how to dance. Not a whole bunch of teachers just watching me dance. Nah, dog. Feel these hips, Kyle. Way. Yeah. <laughs> each his own, man. Each his. Hey, homegirls, dog. I, I mean, that's why I don't dance, dog. I know how I am. <laughs> yeah. Homegirls don't dance too close, dog, porque le gusta ver sanguladito, compadre. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that part, dog. Yeah. I'm the big homie, dog, with the moves. Watch me. Uh, you know, you didn't hear me leave. <laughs> you coming in with the viciousness. I was coming in with the technicality. Uh, dog, yeah, no, we out here living, dog. You over there being technical. And in the showroom presentation, nah, dog, come out them pockets. <laughs> Hey, so, someone's got to do the technicality, man. Hey, dog, I'm with you. I fuck with the vision. <laughs> but what else do you want to get into, dog? Um, I we'll probably um probably in some other time. I I, I think um we covered the topic of what's uh what's 2020 bring. What's part of um what kind of change the music were we're there, but you know no, yeah, still dog, we're, we're we're making it pop. We're two. making it happen. Oh, there's levels to this shit, dog. Two. You either. You either run up the stairs, get on the escalator, or try to find an elevator, you feel me? But as long as you keep going up, dog, <laughs> the only limit is where you want it to be, you feel me? But uh, shout out to all of you for listening. A homie and the compa Isaac are out. Any plugins? Uh, 